there. It's time to open a bottle because this is our incredible fifth episode of David's and Andreas's conversations on classical music. Can you believe it? We yeah, are it's very a, it's proud. Incredible, it's incredible we've survived that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, we, we, we got really... Uh, a certain number of clicks and views so that's that's great we're proud of it and we take that as a sign of encouragement to continue right, right. and now we're doing something different today so rather than focusing on com composers we're actually going to be focusing on compositions in particular we're going to do a series of episodes about the concerto uh, in this case we're going to start with Concerti for wind instruments. Uh, there is a, a wonderful series of videos uh, on YouTube. You can look for them by, by clicking for Philharmonia Orchestra, the, the, new, the London based orchestra, Philharmonia Orchestra. It's called Instrument Guides. Mm -hmm. And they have a, uh, a member of the orchestra talking about his or her instrument. And they're, they're quite interesting, and it's a way to know the instruments mm -hmm. a little bit. I always was fascinated how, you know, why of all the things that create sound, you know, the bassoon looks like a bassoon and the oboe looks like an oboe, and, you know, there could be infinite reasons why it could be something else, but that's what they are, and you can learn something about that. Also, by popular demand, which in our case is a handful of people, uh, we are going to list the compositions we're going to be talking about at the end of the video in case you want to then, uh, you know, take a picture or something and then, and then look for them. Um, so we'll get started. Yes. Cool. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to start with the weirdest of, <laughs> of the wind instruments. Uh, the, the, the wonderfully strange bassoon. Uh, so the bassoon is an instrument that typically is adding color to an orchestral composition in an orchestra ensemble, but I think it's worthy of, of a more prominent role as a, as a solo instrument or, or as a concerto for bassoon. Um, it has a great range. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes you know, from, from, from the tenor voice to the bass voice. Uh, I actually think their tenor sound is a particularly beautiful sound. It's, it's I, wonderful. It, yeah, you I, could say basically it's the equivalent of a of a cello in the in the wind section. Yeah, it, I, I I happen to like it a lot, and so I'm I'm happy to be featuring it. Um, and we're going to feature a concerto by the uh, the wonderfully Germanically named Karl Maria von Weber. Uh, uh, so who, who, who happened, who was a, a piano and guitar virtuoso, but ironically is known for his operas and his work for clarinet and bassoon and not necessarily for piano or guitar. Uh, but von Weber was a really one of the, the most important composers of the classical period. Uh, he was hugely influential with you know, future famous composers, uh, both as a conductor who, who, who was the, really one of the first people, if not the first, who conducted without playing an instrument. Yes. So together with, with Mendelssohn, you could say he's, he founded the modern profession of, of a conductor. Yeah. So yeah. He, he, he preceded Mendelssohn. He was mm -hmm. earlier. Yeah, yeah, true. But, true. Yeah. Uh, and also, he was a wonderful orchestrator who, who really was very influential as such. Uh, one interesting piece of information is he, he was the first Western composer to actually incorporate an authentic Chinese melody uh, mm -hmm. in, in his composition. So he wrote uh, incidental music to the play Turandot, uh, oh, where cool. he incorporated that, yeah. Chinese, real Chinese melodies. Turandot, of course, is a play which was the basis for the famous Puccini opera, Turandot, uh, which is famous for the, you know, Nessun Dorma aria 
Uh, so so this, this is an earlier version of Turandot, and it was kind of a first in, in, in Western music history. Um, another, uh, unfortunately, by the way, he, he, he was another one of those composers who died young. Uh, you know, we did a whole series of all of them, uh, and we may have mentioned him as well. Uh, he died at the age of 39. And uh, interestingly, he was a first cousin to Mozart's wife. So they were ah yeah true true. So they were Constance they were, Weber yeah 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 that's that's yeah. the family right. Yes, there you are. Um, anyway, so so his bassoon concerto happens to be one of the most uh, performed bassoon concerti in the repertoire, uh, and I think. And we actually, have to admit the repertoire is astonishingly small. <laughs> yeah. But hey, he's but still he's one of the top. No, no. Uh, and 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 mm -hmm. I happen to think it's a very very beautiful piece. And mm -hmm. and it, here here's listen to the the opening, which is you know quite majestic and beautiful. And then I want to mention, I have an honorary mention for another concerto, which is Vivaldi's concerto for bassoon in A minor. It's number 498. The reason I'm saying that is because Vivaldi conduct, uh, composed 40 bassoon concertos, which is mind boggling, including a few in A, a minor. So, <laughs> you know, you and I had a little. We, we we were referring to the wrong concerto when we were talking yeah, about Yeah, exactly, uh, because uh, A minor is not sufficient <laughs> to find it. <laughs> Incredibly, right? Bassoon in A minor is not sufficient. So, I mean, think about it, 40 bassoon concertos. He, Vivaldi wrote more than 500 concerti. Did, which is incredibly prolific composer. Which is yeah. astonishing. Yeah. I mean, granted, they were, they were kind of short compared to like say a 19th century concerto, but but still, you know, 500 concerti in addition to all his other music. Plus he, he you know, he had his duties as a, as a priest on top of that. I, I don't know when he went to the bathroom. At that time, there was just one style of music. So if you like had this style, of course, Vivaldi has his personal style, but mm -hmm. I mean, it makes it easier. You don't have to figure 
you know everything out you just know this is the form this is the style and then you just compose of course there is still enough room for sure. creativity and genius but sure so talking about style i'm glad you mentioned that um the reason i picked this particular concerto is because it, it illustrates perfectly what i would call vivaldi's unique hypnotic style mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he has is mm -hmm. he has this hypnotic rhythm about it which i find completely fascinating so so let's listen to that in in this song concerto I hope you kind of got the sense of it, uh, but I, I wanted to illustrate a different composition by Vivaldi, which you know very well because you conducted it fairly recently, the, the Nisi Dominus, which is a piece for alto voice and strings. And, strings, and, yeah. and that also has this beautifully hypnotic mm -hmm. quality. It's, yeah, it. that's so, really so unique. Yeah, yeah. Right, let's, let's listen to that as well and, and hopefully uh, whoever is listening into it can can get what I'm trying to convey because I think it's a uniquely bivad. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so that, that takes care of the bassoon portion. So, Andreas, take it over. <laughs> now, I mean, speaking of weird instruments, so let's let's go from the, the from the, from the very bottom to the very top of the wind range. Of course, you would have to be fair. You would have a double bassoon, but that is not. I, I don't know if there is any double bassoon concertos that that would be like a double bass in the strings so the lowest register you can find on a wind instrument but on the very top you have a, a very versatile and interesting instrument which is called the piccolo so meaning the piccolo flute and piccolo is the italian word for small so like the small flute and it's like a short traverse flute so the modern metal flute actually which is also a curiosity because flute is part of the wind instrument family and so 
called actually completely called in the complete term uh, called woodwind family because the flute originally was made of wood and then later on in the 19th uh, century to get more sound of it 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 was they they started to make it out of metal so anyway so the short flute or piccolo flute is the top voice in the in the orchestra in the woodwind section and you won't believe it there are of course it started relatively late to become an orchestra instrument originally i think small flutes were used in military bands and then i think one famous example of a fully uh, fetched or fully composed piccolo part is the fifth symphony by beethoven where he in the last movement prominently uses the piccolo flute but anyway that and and also my my idea when when trying to find some examples for for the solo instruments i also had a, a certain ambition to look to the to the 20th century so and i found very interesting a piece i didn't know the composer didn't know the piece but i found it on youtube so there is an american composer born 1961 lowell lieberman living in new york and he i think whatever in the 90s or beginning of the of the second millennium composed a concerto for for piccolo flute and small orchestra and and i think it's it's a very valid composition very interesting if you uh, what i also recommend if you don't know a piece just like looking at any picture in the museum you don't know just give it some time listen listen once put it aside listen a second time and see what happens so anyway this is the beginning of this piccolo concerto by lowell lieberman To you david what what do we have next okay so uh -huh, or next... shall i take the flute next yeah go ahead take the flute okay so then that's we it. have the, the yeah the, yeah, yeah that's true that, let's let's say with flute so then we have the the normal flute the normal sized flute and there again i i i came across a, a concerto by a composer in the mostly in the 20th century it's a Polish composer, a composer of Polish origins, Krzysztof Penderecki. The name is, is maybe familiar to some of you. Anyway, he lived from 1933 to 2020. And he was, speaking of prolific composers, he was a very prolific 20th century composer. So he composed everything from symphonies to operas to solo concertos to small ensemble chamber music, you name it. And even very interesting, didn't know that, but found it on Wikipedia. His music was used in films as well. For example, even in, in uh, Martin Scorsese's Shutter Island, for example. So uh, quite an interesting figure. Anyway, he composed a flute concerto. And again, I recommend, I think it's a very interesting piece, again, for flute and small orchestra. So give it a chance. It's not, maybe not familiar to many ears, but give it a chance. Thank you. 
move from flute and piccolo to clarinet. Uh, and I, I, I'll do my, my honorary mention first because it's unavoidable. And that's the very famous Mozart clarinet concerto, which is, I think, by far the most famous clarinet concerto in, in the repertoire. Uh, and, and there's some interesting tidbits about it. Um, he, he, Mozart wrote it for his friend, a very virtuoso clarinetist of his time called Anton Stadler. They were very good friends and he wrote it for his friend. It was the last full orchestral mm -hmm. comp uh, composition that he wrote in his life. He, he actually died about three weeks after finishing this composition. So this is the very last one. It was not the Requiem, the last one. It was this, mm -hmm. this, this one. Uh, and, um, you know, it's very famous. Listen to this little piece of it. I'm sure you'll recognize it. <laughs> focus on highlighting the clarinet is actually Aaron Copland's uh, concerto. Uh, so Aaron Copland was one of the greatest 20th century American composers. Uh, and when I say 20th century, I mean literally 20th century. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was born in 1900 and he died in 1990. <laughs> Doesn't get any more 20th century than that. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. he, his work embodies what is generally regarded as kind of the, the American sound, the typical mm -hmm. American sound, which is a sound that kind of evokes the American West and the pioneering spirit. He wrote a number of compositions in that vein. Uh, examples are Appalachian Spring, mm -hmm. Rodeo, uh, Fanfare for the Common Man. Uh, but he was also highly influenced by, by jazz, by Black and Latin American music. And so this concerto covers everything in a mm -hmm. sense that, well, first of all, it was, it was commissioned by the, by the great Benny Goodman. Mm -hmm. King of uh, Swing. Yes, the King of Swing. And, and, but the concerto itself is very interesting, but very schizophrenic because it opens, the first movement is beautifully lyrical and, 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 and it really is, is gorgeous, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, he himself called it bittersweet lyricism. Then the rest of the concerto is totally jazzy. Mm -hmm. It's all you know, jazz with Latin American beats throughout. It's thoroughly modern. It is like two different pieces all in one. Uh, I think it's it's worth listening to, and so that is my vote for the clarinet concerto, other than Mozart. <laughs>
to do over? Yes. Then we have one more member of the woodwind family, which is, as you mentioned, the oboe. And of course, there would be English horn, like a lower yeah. oboe. By the way, the English, I, I, I am, I, I don't know why the English horn is not used more. It would be my absolute favorite instrument. Yeah, there I are beautiful this, spots in, in symphonies yeah. all over the place, yeah. but I, I don't, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't, it's, it's a, a wonderful, shame. so a little bit melancholic and lower and, mm -hmm. and anyway. So oboe, and again, yes. I found a very, very, I think, actually important composer of the 20th century called Rafe Vaughan Williams. So two last names, so to say, and Rafe is the first name. And he was born in 1872 and died in 1958. An English composer. English composer, right. And he found a beautiful, his own voice, a beautiful, singular, recognizable voice by collect his, at one point in his life, he started collecting and transcribing British folk songs. So, and you can hear that all over the place that he, he really embodied that and incorporated all over in his music. So, so to some people, it sounds, it, it sounds nostalgic, but I think it's not meant that way. It's a deep love, love for the country and the, the, the atmospheres of that country. So listen to that. And by the way, yeah, an anecdote is it was actually uh, should be created or first performed 1944 mind that in london but then the performance was uh, cancelled in london because they feared a a air raid by the german bombers so they it was performed elsewhere but anyway so um yeah listen to that wonderful beginning of the von williams oboe concerto So we actually have one last thing to mention, uh, which is, I guess it would be part of the wind instruments, I'm not even sure, but there's actually an interesting concerto for harmonica. Uh, so the, uh, the Brazilian uh, composer, Heitor Villalobos wrote a harmonica concerto, and here's a little piece of that. covered a lot of concerti for, for winds and hopefully we're able to highlight that aspect of, of music making. It gives you a wide range of possibilities and what I like a lot in concerti is that you really, as you mentioned before, you really get to know the instrument. You, you discover so many things. I mean, and of course you discover what the instrument can do and cannot do and what is difficult, what is what is typical and so so it's actually very, very fun to listen to concerti. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and the interplay between the solo instrument and the orchestra is wonderful. Yeah. 
to be, it's, it's... to be to be to 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 mention that i mean concerto comes from the italian word concertare which means which means actually in a way like compete so meaning there is a kind of a competition be between the solo player and the, the 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 ensemble and they they like a ping pong sometimes they they or a discussion between uh, two or more people Terrific. Well, hopefully you enjoyed it and uh, look forward to the next one. Yeah, great. Thanks. Bye. Uh, bye.